Bottom line up front on Budapest, Hungary. Well, it's much safer, prettier, cleaner than we actually thought it would be considering it's more in the eastern part of Europe, but it's just as pretty and amazing as the western part of Europe, but it is cheaper. The average cost for lodging is only $48 per night. You can get a pint of beer for two to three dollars, meals five to fifteen dollars, depends on where you eat, if you're in a touristy spot or not. Speaking of being a touristy person, if you wanna go see all the sites, we'd recommend two days to move at a moderate pace. If you wanna slow it down and add a riverboat cruise or go visit the bathhouses, then maybe a third day is necessary. But yeah, you can see the city in two days. We're gonna do it in one day, actually, as far as the sites go. It's a really cool city. I really like it. It's set up kind of like Prague, but it's not nearly as crowded as Prague. And that's what I like about it. Budapest is cool. things. First thing, we were walking, trying to find a spot to talk about St. Stephen's Cathedral, and we walked by it, and I felt this heat on my face, almost like there was a flame. I said, back up, you're beautiful. Well, she didn't say I was beautiful, but the lighting's beautiful, because it's bouncing off this building. Anyway, Saint, second thing, St. Stephen's Cathedral is behind me. It is absolutely gorgeous, and what I like is it's only like $1 donation to go in, and if you come here early in the morning, the way the light, the godly light, comes through the windows and just is soft and warm, and everything is so dramatic. And we spent like five, 10 minutes in there, and I feel like we saw it, it's beautiful. Definitely something you should do in Budapest. But this spot right here, if you want to talk about it, this is where you talk. Right here. Window. Show them the window. That, that is bright. It's really bright, so you want to stand there and talk. All right, let's go. Are you sure? So we're here, this is the Parliament Building. It's really cool to come see, and you should come see because the architecture is really impressive, but today is a very special day. It marks, uh, it's a public holiday, it's of the Hungarian Revolution. So what happened was after World War II, the Soviet Union pretty much had control of Hungary, and there were a lot of Soviet-imposed policies. The government was communist. Some students came to this square, and they protested, and they marched, and they tried to break into the Parliament Building to do a radio broadcast of what they were demanding, which was pretty much a democracy. And they shot at those protesters. They're all students. Once again, one of the students died, and the protesters, instead of you know breaking and running, they actually wrapped him up in a flag of Hungary and hoisted him above the crowd. And so this was the start of the revolution, the uprising. It spread all across the capital, all across the country, and that was essentially the fall of communism in Hungary, which is why today, just today, they're flying the Hungary flag but with a big circle in the middle. Because there used to be a communist star there, but they've cut it out to say like we're done with communism, we're done with the Soviet-imposed policies. I think it's really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Buda Castle. Buda Castle is not just one individual castle, it's a one big collection of buildings. It's like a palatial complex. It's got the old castle and now there's museums and it's just this labyrinth winding multi-terrace level area you can walk around in kasamats which are like dug out caverns in the caves where apparently the ottomans kept tigers and bears and if they had lions it would have been oh my yeah so we would say if you want to go into the museum go into the museum if you want to just walk around the castle grounds they're very pretty very medieval looking then do that this goes to the castle this is kasamat passage let's go you want to go Some part of the castle, Bud Buddha Castle. I don't know where we are. <laughs> like, we see a dark area, and we're like, let's go down there. We're not weird. Maggie thinks she's so funny because we're both running around with cameras and sometimes we lose sight of each other and if she finishes taking photos before I finish taking videos, she likes to hide behind lamp posts and stuff and watch me just stand there and look around like a big dum-dum because I can't find her. Anyway, this fountain in the Buddha Castle complex is their answer to the Trevi Fountain, the history of 
Hungary, um, King Matthias, 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 he imported a lot of the Renaissance from Italy and he's like, well, we need a fancy fountain too. And he's actually the one that brought all the classical architecture and everything to Hungary and probably a big influence on what it is for today. But yeah, that's their answer to the Trevi Fountain, like a one-upper. I think the Trevi Fountain's a little bit prettier, to be honest. I also think that Maggie's mean and she shouldn't hide from me in big crowds and I just do circles looking in every direction look like a lost child. I love the fact that they advertise where their toilets are. There's no guesswork. And free Wi-Fi. Up on the, on the northern end of the Buda Castle district neighborhood area, you'll find the Matthias Church, which is beautiful. It looks very similar to St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna. Also, the Fisherman's Bastion is this monument that you see that we're walking all over. It looks like uh, Ariel's castle somewhat. Uh, it's white, it's very bright, it's very pretty, very fairy tale like And the name, you're like, well, why is it called the Fisherman's Bastion? Because right below this, this is like the castle wall, is essentially below this there was a uh, a village called Fishtown. That's what the history books say. And the fishermen there, when this castle was attacked, they would run up and defend this portion of the castle walls. They made this monument in their honor of like, hey, the fishermen are, they were part of the defense of the castle. So that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe that's what So the Danube River does cut right through Budapest. You've got the Buddha side and the Pest side. On the Pest side, there's a monument that's worth checking out. It's it's for the Holocaust. Essentially, when the Nazis were here, they executed a lot of Jewish people on the banks of the river. They just shot them and they fell into the river. And so right along the bank, they have these shoes, the shoes of the people that died, and they're just made of iron. So it's a very creative, solemn, moving monument that's worth your time. And it's right near the Parliament building, so you're probably gonna see it anyway. And I'm really impressed. Even today, we saw someone who got emotional and was moved by it. We saw people leaving flowers and candles, so there's still a great deal of respect for this. Um, it's worth checking out. If you want to explore the nightlife in Budapest, we highly recommend that because there's these really cool things called ruin bars. It's very deep rooted in their history and their culture. So after World War II, a lot of buildings, especially in this area, were bombed out, completely destroyed, gutted, and they were left just kind of abandoned, crumbling, and they said, you know what, let's open up some bars in these, you know, back after World War II, and they're still here today, they're very, Hip, and it's not so much an underground thing, it's very well known today, but they're very like artistic and creative. Uh, really big hipster vibe. The beer is usually much cheaper than anywhere else at the touristy sites in Budapest. Yeah, it's just kind of Alice in Wonderland, eclectic, crazy, colorful, nothing matches like walking through a thrift store but having beer. It's really, really cool. You should check it out. Thanks for watching our video, friends. I had a good time, I hope you had a good time, and hope you're having a good time watching us give you the bottom line up front around the world on the cities that we visit and the things that we do. Okay, bye.